and welcome back to my channel. My name's Erin, I'm 24 years old, and I help 20-somethings be better with their money. If you are new to my content, then welcome. I have a reach of over 300,000 people on TikTok and Instagram, and now I'm moving over to YouTube to hopefully talk in a little bit more depth about some of the financial concepts that I'm talking about on social media through my short form content. So on the channel, we'll be talking through budgeting, saving, investing, increasing your income, all the things that will help you be better with your money in your 20s. So make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what you wanna see. Today's video is going to be all about 10 things that I wish that I could tell my 18 year old self about money. This is a new series that I started doing on TikTok, but I wanted to bring it over to YouTube to talk super in depth about the top 10 things that I would tell myself about money if I could go back to when I was 18 years old. This stuff is so important. If I knew what I knew now at 24, at 18 years old, I would be so far ahead financially, it's not even funny. That's because of a mixture of a few things. First, making mistakes financially in your 20s can set you back literally decades. I don't wanna say this to scare you because not making any decisions is still a decision. So don't necessarily be afraid to make money moves in your 20s. But let's say something like getting yourself into thousands of dollars worth of credit card debt or financing a new vehicle these decisions are hard to reverse and you kind of have to literally pay the price for those decisions that you're making in your 20s. So one thing that I talk about a lot on my channel is proactively making good decisions with your money in your 20s so that we can avoid these mistakes from the get-go. And second, because money saved and invested at the ages of 18, 19, 20 is so valuable. No one's really thinking about saving, let alone investing at the age of 18. If you can start saving and investing a little bit of money at that age, you will be light years ahead of your peers. And because of that, I want you to learn how to be good with your money as early as possible. So here are the top 10 things that I wish I could tell my 18 year old self about money. Moving into our first tip. Do not wait until you feel like you know everything to start making money moves in your 20s. You are never going to feel like you know everything. So at some point not making money moves because you feel like you don't know enough is just leading to inaction. For example, I started investing at the age of 20 and I probably only knew like 10% of what I know now. And yeah, I definitely would have done things a little bit differently if I had known what I know now. But if I didn't make that first investment at the age of 20 when I didn't have a lot of money and I didn't really feel like I knew that much, definitely wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today, which is at 24 years old, I grew my net worth to over $100,000. Just getting started is really what's important here. And this doesn't just go for investing. This goes for saving, paying down debt, learning a new skill that you can freelance or maybe increase your income. If you don't try new things, if you don't make a move, you're never going to move from the point that you're at today. I Second tip, do yourself a favor and read a money book sooner rather than later. I've read probably 10 or 15 books about money in my lifetime, and I'm not even kidding, 90% of what I know today has come from books or podcasts. These are free or very low cost resources that you can use to learn about money. These concepts are not difficult to understand at all, so once you do get it, you will be so well off. There are a ton of book options out there geared for beginners. One of my favorites is called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. This book is going to break down all of the financial fundamentals that you need to know in order to be good with your money in your 20s. My third tip being good with your money is 10% about skill and knowledge and 90% about discipline. I just said in my last tip that these concepts are not difficult so really anyone can learn them which is really promising because I think a lot of people think that they just aren't fundamentally set up to be good with their money which is entirely not true. For example I went to college studying finance and economics so if anyone should be learning about money and being good with their money it should be me but I literally did not learn even one thing about personal finance in school. I didn't learn it in high school. I didn't learn it in college. Again, 90% of what I know today is from books and podcasts, the other 10% being from my peers. So once you have that 10% skill and knowledge that you need to really understand personal finance, the other 90% is all about being disciplined with your money. You don't just learn about money and then you're good for the rest of your life. You have to continue to be disciplined, understanding where your money is going, saving, investing in order to continue to be good with your money. The fourth thing that I wish I could tell my 18 year old self about money is that you need to be good at managing your money before you should worry about increasing your income and making more money. The best time to learn about money is when you don't have any money. So whether you're a new college student, you just graduated from high school, you haven't started a full-time job yet, your income is lower. That doesn't mean that you should hold off learning how to save, invest, budget, track your spending. I hear way too many people say that they'll start saving or they will start investing once they start making 
making more money. And that usually doesn't happen. The best time to learn, try new things, develop strong money habits is now when your income is lower because your mistakes will be relative to your age and your income. Would you rather be making money mistakes now at your current age and your current income or once you have a big salary later on in life? All of the mistakes that I've made with my money were super minuscule compared to what a lot of people make because I made them at the age of 20. So learn how to manage your current level of income first and then we'll worry about making more money. Five, you need to know where your money's going. In order to be good at managing your money, you need to know where your money is actually going every single month. I think people really underestimate how easy it is to spend money. When I was in college, I worked a ton, so I had a decent amount of money for a college student, but I did not track even $1 of it. So I had no idea where my money was going. And guess what? I was terrible at saving money in college. People tend to put too much emphasis on the concept of budgeting and not enough emphasis on actually tracking their spending to actually know where their money's going. You can use a budgeting app if that works for you. I personally think that the budgeting apps are a little bit too automated to really be impactful. I found what's worked for me is using an actual spreadsheet to manually track my expenses. This is a spreadsheet that I use to track my spending every single month that is available for download in my stand store. Six, learn to prioritize what you value spending your money on. I think everyone thinks about budgeting and saving their money as focusing on the areas that they need to cut out of their life, but it's important to focus on the areas that you actually do want to spend on. Because at the end of the day, you are making money in order to be able to spend to enjoy your life. So you can afford to spend money. You just can't afford to spend your money on everything. For example, at this point in my life, I do prioritize living alone without roommates, which makes my cost of rent a little bit higher. But I can afford to do that because I don't value having a high car payment. So I kept my car payment as low as possible and I paid off my student loan so I don't have that payment every month. Another example, I prioritize spending my money on experiences and dining with my friends, but I learned that I don't value spending my money on things like home decor, concert tickets, takeout, etc. So figuring out what you like to splurge on and what you like to save on will really help you figure out what your spending values are. Seven, choose your friends and your partner very wisely. On the friend side, if you have friends that have totally different viewpoints on money as you, they spend all of their time on activities that are totally out of your budget and they influence you to make bad choices with your money, it's going to be really, really really hard to get ahead financially in your 20s. I'm not saying that you have to cut those people totally out of your life, but I think it's important to find friends in your 20s that have similar money goals as you do. Now, when it comes to your partner, it is so true when they say that choosing a partner is one of the biggest financial decisions that you'll make in your lifetime. It probably doesn't feel like it now because if you're in a relationship, you might not be living together. You might not be able to see how your partner can really make an impact to your finances, but coming from someone who has lived with an ex-boyfriend, as you get older, your partner will make a much bigger impact on your finances than you think. Your partner can absolutely make or break your finances as an adult. I could make an entire separate video on things to be careful of, but choose your partner wisely and be careful when it comes to dating and your finances. Number eight, if you're going to college, make sure that you are getting a good ROI on the money that you're spending on college. Now, there's a lot of things that go into this. First, your return on investment on college will be higher if you spend less money on college. So if you're planning on graduating from college with six figures worth of student loan debt, you're going to need to be able to make a lot of money from college to be able to get a good ROI. So unless you're planning on being like a doctor or some other profession like that, it's going to be hard to get a good ROI on college with six figures worth of student loan debt because six figures plus interest is a lot more money over the course of the loan. But even assuming that you are spending a moderate amount of money on your college degree, there's still a lot of things that you can do to make sure that you're going to get a good ROI on college. The first big one is choosing a good major. People say follow your passion. Luckily, there are a ton of ways to follow your passions outside of getting a traditional four-year degree. So let's say your passion is something creative. There are ways to learn that creative skill on your own and start freelancing or selling your services elsewhere instead of maybe majoring in art at a four-year university. Some other things that you can do to get a good ROI on college are things like making sure you're getting internships while you're in college. This can really help you get a good job when you graduate, which ultimately is the goal. Continuing to apply for scholarships throughout college. I actually offer my own financial literacy scholarship. You can apply on my profile. And last is just making sure you're taking advantage of networking opportunities while you're on campus. They say your network is your net worth, and I believe that to be totally true, especially when you're in college.
college. Number nine, learn a high value skill in college or post high school and start earning money. We literally live in a world where your opportunities to make money are so abundant. I'm 24, I've been out of school for a little over two years now and I literally don't even use my degree anymore because I found opportunities to make money outside of the typical nine to five job. Freelancing and the gig economy is becoming so, so prevalent. Even if you are planning on going to college, getting the four year degree, getting the typical nine to five job or similar job post college, while you're in college, you have such an opportunity to leverage your free time to learn a high value skill and start freelancing to earn money while you're in school. You are never going to have more free time than you do in college. So take that opportunity to learn a new skill and start making some money from it. And number 10, this is my very last thing that I wish I could tell my 18 year old self about money. You need to believe that you are capable of making a lot of money. Your mindset is so important about so many different things in life, but especially about your money. I did not grow up from a wealthy family. So when I graduated from college, I thought that I would be working a pretty average corporate job, making a pretty average salary for the rest of my working life. Two years later, I've been able to quit my full-time job, start a business, earn more than my corporate salary strictly from freelancing. And if I can do it, you can definitely do it too. So those are my 10 things that I wish I could tell my 18 year old self about money. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what other questions you have about managing your money in your 20s.